As you probably know, WordPress is a multi-user system, and when you create a new user in WordPress, you're asked to assign a user role. And this is where confusion generally ensues. Uh, there are five user roles that come standard with WordPress. And you're probably, the first time you go to create a new user, you're probably a bit confused about what user role is the right role to assign to your new user. Uh, in this screencast, I'm going to answer all of your questions about user roles and walk through all of the different roles and demonstrate to you uh, what permissions are assigned with each one of the default user roles. There are five user roles in WordPress, administrator, editor, author, contributor, subscriber. Now, there are plugins that allow you to create your own user roles uh, if you have some very specific security needs or workflow needs. I'm not gonna get into that in this particular video. You should just know that these user roles can be extended by adding new user roles. Uh, if there's interest, I can do a video on advanced user roles and advanced security in WordPress. But this screencast is gonna focus on these five user roles. These are the ones you'll see when you go to create a new user. And for the vast majority of you, just addressing the issue of what these user roles do and what permissions are associated with them will meet most of your needs. And each user role has a group of capabilities assigned to it. Capabilities basically are permissions to do specific things in WordPress. So it may be the ability to write a post and publish a post. It's the ability to edit other people's posts as well as your own posts. There are hundreds of capabilities that can be assigned to different user roles. And in this video, you'll get a sense of which capabilities correspond with each of the five user roles. I'll start at the top with the administrator and work my way through each of the different user roles, uh, starting with the most permissive and working down to the least permissive, which is subscriber. Uh, first of all, the administrator. This is usually the blog owner. When you set up your WordPress website, do the installation and log in, you're automatically set up as the administrator. And you really need to be the administrator to run your website. Um, you need to be the administrator to install plugins and change themes and perform upgrades. These are all the things you do to run your website. Now, it may be that you need someone with more technical ability to assist you in running your WordPress site. If that's the case, then you would create an administrator account for your technical support person. However, Administrator is not one of those roles you want to assign very freely. Uh, when you assign a user the administrator role, you need to make sure that it's someone you can trust because they have complete control of your website. They can do pretty much anything uh, the site owner can do. And when you first log in as a user who is designated as an administrator, this is what you'll see. You'll notice the menu to the left. That is the full menu. That is everything that WordPress has to offer. As I work through these roles, that menu will get smaller. Uh, as we work down to the least permissive, you'll see that there's almost nothing that a subscriber can do. And the other roles are everything in between. Next down is the editor. The editor has complete control over content, but no control over configuration or how WordPress operates. So an editor can publish a post, an editor can edit other users' posts. An editor can approve, reject posts, moderate comments, but an editor cannot install plugins or change themes. And this is what the editor sees uh, when the editor logs in. All of the configuration options on the left side menu have been removed. Uh, however, the editor has complete access to all of the content. So posts, media, links, pages, comments. Uh, additionally, the editor can manage his or her own profile. Next down is an author. Authors can write posts and publish them, but they can only edit their own posts and they can only manage comments related to their own posts. Now note that an author can publish without going through an editor. The editor is not required to approve a post for an author. So if you've got a multi-author blog and you don't want to have an editorial workflow that requires review before a post goes on your website, 
your authors should be set up as the author user role. That way they'll have the ability to log in and create new content and put it online immediately without anyone reviewing it. If, on the other hand, you're trying to run a publication that has some more editorial control, uh, when your authors are set up in WordPress, you don't want to give them the author role. You'll want to give them the role after this, which I'll talk about in a second. But let me show you what the Add New Post page looks like for an author. When an author is writing a post, uh, you'll see over here the author has the ability to click the Publish button, and that would publish the post. And again, on the left, the uh, main menu is pared down to just the bare minimum once we get to the author level. And when an author goes to the list of posts, uh, the author will only have the ability to edit her own posts. Next up is contributor. And as I was saying, if you are trying to implement an editorial workflow where you've got an editor reviewing content before it goes live on your website, your authors then should be set up as contributors. Contributors can log in and create posts, and they can submit posts, but they don't have the ability to publish those posts. So a user with higher permission, in this case an administrator or an editor, would have to publish those posts. And so when a contributor logs in and tries to create a post, this is the screen they see. And you'll notice over here on the in the publish box, the uh, button that formerly said publish for an author now says submit for review. So there's no illusion that the contributor is posting something directly to the site. It's right up front that the contributor is going to have to wait for an editor or an administrator to review the post and determine that it should be published. And then the final user role is subscriber. And subscribers can log in and they can leave comments and they can modify their profile and that's all they can do. Now this is a very useful user role uh, for sites where you want to maintain a high degree of control of your comments. You can require in your discussion settings that you, the user be logged in to leave a comment. And in that case, the user would be logged in as a subscriber. Basically, it's a user account for your readers that has very limited capability. They have the ability to leave a comment and change their email address. And so when a subscriber logs in, all they really see is the user profile. They can change their name and their email address, but that's about all they can do. And so that is a quick and hopefully clear overview of the five different WordPress user roles.